we didn't know what it was at first because it was such a weird thing for a family. No one had ever experienced it before. Well, we thought Alex was a daydreamer, living in her own little world. Um, we didn't see a bad thing at the time, but then the daydreaming started to happen when Alex was in dangerous situations, crossing roads. So she got to the age where she was able to start to cross the roads on her own. And she'd only get halfway over and stop and have a little, a little moment to herself. <laughs> when I was in year seven, I started having myoclonic jerks because um, I was dropping things, um, sometimes uh, falling over without knowing why. And um, yeah, these were later identified as myoclonic seizures. Mum and Dad took me to who I needed to see about it and they like, gave me some EEGs and all that. And I found out that I had epilepsy. I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was f from an infant, basically. But that's, I stopped taking medication when I was about eight years old when we came back over to Australia from Bahrain. And um, I was off medication for about five, six years, and then I had a relapse just last year. I was diagnosed when I was 12 years old, but I remember having my first seizure when I was eight. I was diagnosed at, I think, age 12, um, after multiple tests and uh, a lot of like um, visits to the doctor. I was eight and a half months old when I was diagnosed with epilepsy. I was at home when I had the tonic-clonic seizure, so luckily my dad knew what to do. And then I was rushed to the hospital because this was the first time it happened. And um, the doctor on, at emergency, he said that um, I have epilepsy. Oh, the first time I had a seizure, I didn't really know what it was because I hadn't had one for such a long time. So I didn't really tell anyone. And, but then it happened again and obviously I had to do something about it. So I contacted a neurologist and yeah, we started from there. Help from a friend who was in the medical profession. Um, who sort of alerted us to the fact that epilepsy wasn't just having large fits, that there were various versions of it that we knew nothing about at that stage. I knew absolutely nothing at all. I didn't even know what it was. I yeah, didn't even know it existed. It's very, very terrifying to have your life changed in an instant, to say one minute you are normal and then the next minute you're I suppose different, like, you know, it's very, it's very altering, life altering. Um, yeah, I saw myself a bit differently too, so it took a while for me to accept the change as well. I didn't feel that bad, I didn't take that seriously. I just took it as an okay, just don't do much, like don't push yourself too hard or anything like that. I reckon I was probably relieved, if anything, because so many doctors had been saying that I was making it up or we just couldn't find anything. But in a way, I also felt like I was, you know, some sort of weird, one-of sort of person. But, um, yeah, it was probably better that I was diagnosed then and put straight onto a medication.